What I want to do here is show how the skeptical heretics claim that states formed from reverence to village elders and other natural authorities within the tribe is probably wrong. Now, in this debate on the formation of early states, there are two general theories. There's Robert Carniero's circumscription theory, and there's Henry Clausen's ideology theory. Carniero's theory is that states formed through conquest of circumscribed areas. For example, in a river or mountain valley, it's hard to move and people are basically tied to the land. What this means is that a powerful military force can move in and extort people in the circumscribed area, and those people will just have to sit and take it because they have nowhere they can go. Henry Clausen's theory is that states formed through ideology, and mainly religious ideology, and this ideology resulted in people voluntarily submitting to states, for the most part, uh, funding uh, the state to a point where the state had enough troops to use force on the margin to threaten non-payers. That is, most people would fund the state voluntarily, similar to how people voluntarily today tithe to churches or tithe to, to mosques. And with these funds, the church slash state would be able to fund a armed retinue, which could then enforce uh, universal payment or universal tithing. If we look at a state today, how does it work? Well, most people today support the state. They may not support every particular measure, but they do support the state. Almost everyone in the U.S. supports the U.S. government per se, as an institution through time. They may support radical change, but they support the existence of the U.S. federal government. People who don't support the state are kept in line by threat of imprisonment or whatever. If you don't pay your taxes, bad things happen to you without this uh, threat of force threat of being thrown in prison. What you'd get is you get a bunch of people not paying their taxes and cascading secession, and the state would fail. Now, we can see that religion provides a very similar mechanism. Let's say you have people who have a religion and say that everyone must tithe and obey the religious commandments. Most people go along with it, and there are a few who, are kept, who don't, and they are kept in line by force, right? just like a modern secular state. So religion provides us with a mechanism for state formation, a very close parallel. And if you look at the early states, uh, where an area went from a statelessness to a state de novo, not from being conquered by an outsider, but, but they themselves made, made this transition, what you find universally is religious justification. The Maya, the Inca, the Egyptians, the Chinese, the Japanese, okay. for example, and each of the Mesopotamian city-states, for example, had a patron deity that each city worshipped. And the ruler was always either a priest-king, or sanctioned by the priest, or some sort of demigod. Remember, Hammurabi's code was a code that was handed down from uh, the sun god, if I recall correctly. Tsarist Russia was a religiously justified state up to 1917. That, it, that is, the Orthodox Church ordained the Tsar as imposing the order of God on earth. Feudalism in uh, Western medieval Europe was justified as the order of God. Uh, and the Pope was God's representative on earth. And feudalism was said to be God's order under the Pope, and the Pope was under God. And we know over time these religious justifications eventually started to wear thin. Carniero's theory of circumscription cannot explain very well. It cannot explain states which, which formed de novo in non-circumscribed areas, such as North America. In North America, Native American tribes uh, claimed territories, and the, in these claimed territories you had to obey the law of the tribe, of the Sioux, the Apache, whatever, and tribes actually fought wars with each other over land. I mean, these were pastoral states. It similarly cannot explain the territorial pastoral states in Central Asia. Ideology theory, on the other hand, can explain these states forming in non-circumscribed areas. Now, I still think that there is some truth to Carniero's theory that being in a circumscribed area makes it easier for states to form. 
because it's easier for the religious leaders to enforce the law and collect the taxes if they know where everyone is. If everyone's out you know, with their herd and you don't know where they are, it's a little bit more difficult to enforce the state on, on people who don't want to don't want to pay into it. And moreover, uh, when we look at a map of, of where the first states were, they do tend to occur around circumscribed areas. So I believe there is some truth to Carnier's theory, but Carnier's theory can't explain everything. Now, to respond to the skeptical heretics theory, his theory simply has no evidence. It's a common sense theory that I used to hold before I actually read up on the subject that people just came together in a state formed naturally out of people interacting or out of necessity or something like that. But there's simply no evidence for that, and it's not taken seriously by anyone. There's conquest theory, there's Car Carniero, and there's ideology theory with Klassen. Right? The, 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 the idea of the you know, organic by necessity state is not held by anyone who studies this matter. Moreover, the skeptical heretic didn't really argue for this or cite anything. He just asserted it as if he knew how states came to be. Now, one way we can realize that this theory is probably false, the theory of the organic outgrowth of the tribe state, that it's probably false, is with Dunbar's number. Robin Dunbar, by looking at the typical size of settlements and the size of human brains in relation to other primates, um, found that the you know, came to the conclusion that the average man can conceptualize between 150 and 250 people as actually being people, and that's the upper limit for the size of a tribe. And that's what he found in practice in looking at settlements, that, uh, that 150 was about the upper practical limit. Um, there are some later researchers who believe that humans can conceptualize up to 250 people as actually being people, but basically between 150 and 250 people is the maximum limit for a tribe. Now, in my opinion, this uh, Dunbar's number explains the contradiction of the absolute failure of state-run collectivism and people's desire for it, because the evolved, or I would say organic tribes, were communist. And it worked because it was evolved to work. And so people would overcome the free rider problem and willingly give themselves for their tribe. And this isn't speculation. This was and is seen in hunter-gatherer uh, societies today. Now, what people today do is they then project this appropriate level of collectivism onto an inappropriate, inhuman scale involving millions of people who don't know each other and often hate each other. Socialism can work, but it must be on human scale. Socialist states with millions of people will not work because we are not blank slates. Anyway, the notion that a state such as Egypt, which had around uh, 40,000 people under unification, um, who are separated over hundreds of miles from each other, the idea that this could be an outgrowth of the Dunbar unit is it's absurd. Um, it's just an absurdity. The archaeologists found two temples among the rubble at Arslantepe. On the walls of the corridors separating the temples and the warehouses, paintings of deities show that even economic activity was influenced by religious beliefs. For here, as in all the cities of that era, the elite was quick to use religion to justify itself. Because at that time, religious and ideological legitimization of the power was the main force, the main uh, basis of this power. They, they did not have yet um, military forces for internal purposes. They uh, probably did not have a real legal system to control the behavior of the population. So the control was mainly exercised through ideology. 5,000 years ago, the Egyptian civilization would model itself on Arslantepe. Flourishing agriculture, immense temples and palaces, few cities. Despite these differences, whether at Arslantepe, in Egypt or in Uruk, one constant remained. The importance of religion to ensure social control. The kings would not hesitate to become gods to legitimize their power.